Well, who's ready to jump into the renewed mind? Open your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. We're just, we're going to be here for a minute. And then honestly, we're going to go uh, to a passage that I've, I've never shared from in relation to the renewed mind, but I got a download uh, this past week um, from the book of Zechariah, Zechariah 3, and how God was going to remove old turbans and remove old garments and give us new turbans and new thinking caps and new minds and rich robes so we could walk in the access that God desires for us to have. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse one. Paul is talking about the importance of being a living sacrifice. I love what Leonard Ravenhill used to say. He said, the problem with living sacrifices is they keep trying to climb off the altar, amen? And, and, you know, and, and here, what, what Paul does is he actually outlines some of the evidence of being a living sacrifice. And honestly, one of the most important things for a living sacrifice is to keep your butt on the altar, Amen. We're called to live on the altar and live from the altar. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. That word reasonable service literally means worship. And so really, Paul is talking about the heart of worship. And worship, the heart of worship really is a primary characteristic of this house. In fact, when, when the Lord, I had a visitation in, in, in Foley, Alabama, and the Lord uh, gave me, uh, just spoke to me 12 things that really would be pillars of the houses that he would call home. One of the first was really a house of worship, which led to a house of fullness. And it was a house where the word of God was preached. It was a house of healing and miracles and open heavens. It was a house of forgiveness that would offend the religious spirit. It was a house where all glory was given to God, but it was also a house where people would do whatever it took to get their friends to Jesus, amen? How many remember those four friends in Mark chapter two that carried that paralytic man to Jesus? And not only did they couldn't get him in the door, so they went up and they tore the roof open. And so listen, the other thing is, is God's house is an open heaven, amen? And I want to tell you, not only is this an open heaven, but you're an open heaven. In the same way that you are God's Eden in the earth, in the same way that we are a temple of the Holy Spirit, you are also an open heaven and angels are ascending and descending upon your life. Not only do you have God, but God has you and he's wanting to encounter someone through your willingness and obedience to lift up your head as a gate and allow the king of glory to come out and meet the needs of the world around him. Amen? So again, this really is, really what what, what Paul is is teaching us here is he's actually connecting with the heart of worship. Verse two says, and do not, see it's a continuation of verse one. That's why it starts with and. And do not be conformed to this world. The word conform there means, uh, uh, it's actually where we get the word schematic from. It, It refers to conforming one's, one to the outer fashion or outer appearance, accommodating oneself to a model or pattern. And so how many of you recognize that there's a lot of things around you that are trying to shape what's in you? More so now than ever, right? There's more opportunity. Even when we talk about, um, you know, renewing your money mind, how many know there's a lot of things in the world that would try to shape how you think what you think? Because how you think determines how you live. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks, so is he. Amen. And so I've I've really come to the place over the last few years that the most, um, really what we think and how we think really are two of the most important characteristics of a Christian's life. That's why Jesus said, be careful what you hear and how you hear. Right? Because both will produce something in you that will flow from you. So do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Say transformed. That word transformed in the Greek is metamorpho, which is more fun to say, actually. It's where we get our word metamorphosis from. It also can be translated as transfigured. It's the same word in Matthew 17. When Jesus, Moses, and Elijah met together on the Mount of Transfiguration or Transformation, and it says that, that their, their clothes actually were so, they were so transformed that their outer garments carried the expression of what was happening on the inside, amen. And they shone with like this brightness, so bright that it was like the sun. And, and Peter has this idea. He's like, we're gonna build three temples. One for Jesus, one for Moses, one for Elijah. 
And how many of you know he had an old thing in cap on? He was thinking old covenant in a new covenant encounter. And there's a lot of believers that think whether it's an old covenant or an old man in a new day. That's why Paul said in Ephesians 4 that to put off the old man, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So again, the spirit of something is how you steward it, how you carry it, how you function with it. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you may put on the new man. Amen. And see, before we can put on the new, we have to put off the old. And the in-between is the renovation of our mind, our mind, amen? So he said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word renew there, one definition for renew in the, uh, in the Greek is renovate. Renovate. Has anybody ever done a renovation on your house, Right? Some of you have been around long enough to remember us renovating here, okay? The, in fact, the Connect Cafe we had a whole lot more walls and a much lower ceiling when we first started, but we, we, had to raise the, we had to raise the ceiling. We had to get rid of some unnecessary wires and things that just weren't being used. We had to remove walls. I mean, there was, I remember walking in and being like, this door makes no sense. Like, there's like, no one would come here. Like, I mean, it's just, you just begin to look and like, I wonder why we, they did that. I don't know. I don't know. And so what we did is based on what this facility is called to accomplish, we begin to renovate. And how many know that you're, you're called to accomplish something? You have a purpose. And what God is wanting to do, he's wanting to renew your mind and to renovate your thinking for what you're called to. Not where you've been, because honestly, this building had done an incredible job of serving so many for so long for what they were called to. In fact, I remember when I first came to this property, um, um, uh, they had asked me to come uh, to minister prophetically over an ordination they were doing. And I, know, I was like, I know we're supposed to minister over this individual. I said, but I, I'm seeing this wagon wheel. And I saw this wagon wheel on brown parchment paper and Bill French was here at the time and he, he dropped his cane. He said, I have that in my office. And I said, yeah, I said, and I saw a shaft of light come down and hit the hub, the centerpiece, and it was like a plumb line. And when it hit the center, light went all around the world and it went through these spokes. And all of a sudden this wheel just kept getting bigger. It was a wheel within a wheel within a wheel within a wheel. And I just saw the fire burning brighter and the glory going farther. And he's like, that was what I saw. He's like, but I saw, I saw ministries coming in to connect. I said, I saw them sending out because they were commissioned. We saw two sides of the same coin. It was two different seasons. One was not good and one was bad. One was not more and one was less. Both were God. It was just God in different seasons. And one thing we have a hard time doing when it comes to our thinking is recognizing that was for then, but this is for now. What was, what was permissible is not profitable, amen. And that's why we have to change how we think. Because how many of you know what you're called to do in 2023 might look a little different than what you did in 1983? It might, it might. You know, uh, yesterday was uh, Joshua, my, my Josh's 19th birthday. And uh, yeah, come on, let's give it up for Josh. And Nana had texted me last, last week and she's like, do you happen to have a picture of his first 4th of July? And I'm like, oh. Uh. And I was like, on the way out of town, I'm like, I'm sure there's a hard copy somewhere, but if I can't find it on my iPhone, like if I can't find it in the iCloud, and like that was before we had these and before all the, the, the photos lived up there, right? I'm like, I can't access it because it's a physical, not a digital. And so how many of you recognize that the way, the, really the, the way we even think about pictures is so different now. Like some of you, like, I mean, a lot of us, of course, you know, are old enough to remember, some of you may not. It used to be that you, you didn't have a phone that could take a picture. But your, your, your phone actually was in the kitchen connected by a cord. And, 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 and like when it, when it rang, you had to answer it or you didn't, this is before of answer machines. You didn't know who was calling unless you answered it. Like you couldn't see the number, you couldn't see the name and like, and you couldn't, and like, cause most of you are now like, like I'm not gonna answer like, yeah, just text me, just text me. Like, just text me. Like right now, like I know, I, like, and on, which by the way, just like from a phone, like protocol, if someone texts you, don't call them back. That is rude. Amen, amen, amen. Especially if you, you know, kind of, 
If I text you, call me back, I'll, I'll just get rid of that phone. Hallelujah. <laughs> but no, because how many of you know things, how we do things has changed? But there used to be a time when we would take pictures. This is, this is so crazy. You would take pictures like, a, like, a, like at a wedding we were at yesterday. And you, you would have to take the film. And you would send it away to someone you can't even see. And all of these precious moments and, and wonderful memories. And, and you, you, you want to believe that you got a really great picture. Like them saying, I do, under an umbrella while Pastor Tim and I are soaking wet, right? You know, you want to think that's what you got. And the truth is, you just got a thumb. <laughs> or you got the back of Sarah P's wet head, hallelujah. You know, she went from this to... <laughs> I was like, she looks like a wet Yorkie. It's amazing. Hallelujah. She came in, boofed out, and just came back, but it was still Sarah P. Come on, let's thank the Lord for Sarah P. Amen. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. So great, so great. But that, like, you want to talk about trust, John, let's about trust. That's trust. Sending film to somebody you can't see, not knowing when it's going to come back and what's going to be on it. Right? And so how we do what we do has changed a lot. Amen. And that's where we have to recognize that what was permissible is not profitable. What was good for where we, are, where we were may not be good for where we are. I mean, I think about Pastor Joshua and Pastor Janet. You know, when they joined our team, they moved from Canada to Alabama. That, that means like you can't get more polar opposite. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you know... <laughs> I mean, when I think about it, I'm like, the, that, how you do what you do here is a whole lot different from there, isn't it? Right? You know, and I remember they came in the Alabama summer too, so they didn't get to ease in. They, they, they got baptized by fire, amen? And so one of the keys to walking your new is discerning the new you're called to walk in. Amen? And see, God is wanting us to think new thoughts for a new day that we could think in a new way. And God actually connects the transformation of our mind to the grace we've been given for the ministry call that we have. Because Paul goes on to talk about how this, really the fruit of being a living sacrifice is that we can serve others with the spiritual gifts that have been given to us. He said, for I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think, not to think of himself, more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly because God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. And so he uses the word think three times in that verse. And he actually connects the renewing of our mind to how we think, what we think, and why we think. And it being connected to accessing, appropriating, and living from God's unique grace connected to your individual faith that is going to, comp- going, to be, uh, going to empower you to walk in the fullness of who you're called to be. Some people have uh, mistaught that passage that, that, that everyone's given the same measure of faith. How many of you ever ta- heard that everyone's given the same measure of faith? And that's what that's talking about. To each one is given a measure of faith, but the faith each one is given is unique to what they're called to do. This is not saving faith, This is the exercising of your gift by grace faith. In the same way that we're not all called to have the same amount of resources, we're all called to have what we need for what we're called to. So when you know your assignment, this is why it's important to know your name and discern your lane. When I know what I'm called to, then I know what I need. And here Paul begins to recognize what the fruit of grace and transformation And the renovation, the renewing of the mind looks like in the life of the believer. He goes on to say, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So again, it couldn't be the same faith because we're different functions. And your faith is connected to your function. How many know someone who has a pastoral grace needs one level of faith? Someone who has a prophetic gift has a different level of faith. Same thing, teacher, apostolic. What about a, an, an employer or an employee? See, some people are just believing to get paid. Other people are believing for payroll. Different measures, right? Because of different assignments. And when we begin to compare our measure, saying, well, I want what they got. Well, you know, Puff Daddy said it like this, more money, more problems. I don't believe in problems, 
But I believe that with more authority, more responsibility, more, opportun- more opportunity, more responsibility. Let's say it like that. Hallelujah. Amen. And so sometimes people want more opportunity. The people who have attempted to come work for us in the past think we just sit around, drink coffee, and play golf. They don't know that I get up about 2 o'clock in the morning and I'm going. Hallelujah. Mike's quit on us. People quit on us. We've had a lot of people that can't, couldn't make it till noon their first day. Remember that? I remember one guy just sitting in the cafe, just dazed. And had been a pastor for several years. I said, what's wrong with you? He goes, ah. We had another guy that come work for us for the first two weeks. He would just have to pull over on the side of the road. And then his wife was like, what's, what's wrong with him? He's crawling on the bathroom floor on all fours. On Sunday mornings, I'm like, oh, people can't handle that warfare, amen. Smack him. Tell him to get his butt here, amen. Amen, 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 amen. That's the goodness and the kindness of the Lord, amen, amen. All right. For, listen, true stories. And there's so many more. For as we have many men, because a lot of times people want that, but they don't know the sacrifice. How many of you know God doesn't need prosperity police? You, you, listen, you can't begin to question someone's harvest because you don't know their seed. When you, when you look at where someone is in life, you can't just say, well, that's not fair. I want to tell you what's not fair. Favor ain't fair. But if you walk in your favor, it'll fit. Because what you don't want is what you're not called to. You're an amazing you. You're an, a horrible anyone else. Right? That's why identity is so important. Because insecurity uh, really creates competition. It creates this thing where we're always trying to do more to be more. Instead of living from that place of rest, uh, like Pastor Jonathan talked about. Being able to take a nap in a storm. Right? Right? For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body and Christ and individually members of one another. Then it begins to talk about the distribution of gifts connected to God's grace, which really connects to how we think, what we think, because that is how you steward what you're called to increase. Having then differing, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. So again, one of the evidence of a renewed mind is you use what you've got. You put it into practice. How many of you know Joseph under the old covenant, he didn't, just because, just because he had a bad day, he didn't turn off his gift. He was in prison and he did not get soured. You see, he was in prison, but prison was not in him. Just like you can be in a recession, but recession doesn't have to be in you. And it was him keeping his gift on, interpreting dreams, still connecting with purpose, for purpose, on purpose. You see, because you don't renew your mind by accident. It takes work. It's recognizing going, this is stinking thinking. This is wrong. I want to think like God, so I have to think as God. Amen? I don't think I am God, right? but I can go to this word and see what God thinks about something, right? And again, we've been given, how many of you have heard Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth, amen? (laughs) You posted that this week, didn't you? And I'll tell you, listen, life would be so much simpler if we went to God before Google, right? If we went to the word before WebMD, most of the sickness you battle is self-imposed. It came to you as a symptom, not a sickness. Hear that. It came as a symptom. You had every opportunity to agree with it, and it became a sickness because you attached your faith to it. Are you with me? Having that, man, listen, y'all ready to get your minds changed this July, get your lives changed, get transformed? Come on, you may have crawled in here like a caterpillar, but you're gonna fly out as a butterfly. Amen, amen, amen. Having then gifts differing according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And I so love the diversity of gifts that are given to us in Romans chapter 12. We call these the motivation gifts. In fact, 
And uh, Kingsway College, I teach a whole thing on leadership. And one of the things I do is I help people to identify their Romans 12 gift and how it fits in an Ephesians 4 frame. To identify what, what's your grace so that we know how to impart to you the faith you need by the hearing of God's word to say yes to what God has called you to do. Amen. So I was thinking this week about Romans 12 and about being renewed in the spirit of our mind, being renovated. God, what are the, what's the old we need to take off so that we have room to put on the new? Turn with me to Zechariah chapter three. Zechariah chapter three, and I'll tell you how I got there. I was gonna have you turn to Ezekiel, but most people have a hard time finding Ezekiel. So I'll read you a few verses in Ezekiel while you find Zechariah. Zechariah is easier to find. Go to Matthew and turn left. Ezekiel 24, 15 through 18, if you can put this on the screen for us, Trinity. So Ezekiel gets a hard word. He gets a hard word. Some people don't believe God gives hard word, and I believe that those people don't hear God. So this is, what God, this is what God tells Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from you the desire of your eyes with one stroke, yet you shall neither mourn nor weep, nor shall your tears run down. Hold it together, man. Sigh in silence, make no mourning for the dead. Here's the part that stood out to me. Bind your turban on your head. In other words, hold on to it. How many, how many of you heard the term, I, I'm losing my mind? How many of you know, listen, you've got to hold on to the mind of Christ. When you find yourself in crisis, you'll, you'll find out how mature you are in that mind. Right? Are you, are, are, you, are you trying to bail you out? Or are you just trying to bail out others? Are you getting water out of the boat? Or is water getting in you? All right? So he said, bind your turban on your head and put your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your lips and do not eat man's bread of sorrow. In other words, he said, listen, misery loves company. There are going to be people, like when, when you lose your wife, there are going to be people that try to get you to quit your ministry. And I love how Jesus interrupts prayer meetings. Do you know that not all prayers prayed are of God? And by the way, God doesn't, hear, I mean, yes, he can hear all things, but there are certain prayers he says he doesn't hear, he doesn't answer. Mark chapter five, you see a, a, this, this 12-year-old girl dies, okay? Her name uh, is Jairus' daughter. And Jairus comes to Jesus. He's like, my daughter is, she's, she's, she's on the verge of death. Will you come and pray for her? He's like, sure, yes, of course. And he's making his way to Jairus' house. And he's, he's in a crowd of people. And, and there's one woman who, who, who she presses into him a little bit different. Because he's getting pressed on all sides. But everybody else is pressing in. But she's pressing in in faith. In other words, her faith is leaning into who Jesus is. And in the midst of the crowd, everybody's moving and everybody's touching. But she touched Jesus different because she had trust in her touch. When she touched him, she's like, if I can just get the hem of his garment. And I picture this. Do you guys picture the Bible when you read it? It makes it a whole lot more fun, right? And so she reaches through the crowd. She's like, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And I picture her reaching through like two or three people. You know, kind of like y'all remember back in the 80s with the Cabbage Batch kids. Like, you know, people trying to reach through and grab them. Yeah. Come on, come on. 83, coming back today. Hallelujah. Reaching through. I had one named Josh. Don't you tell nobody I had a baby doll. <laughs> Tina and I both did. And our firstborn's Josh. I love it. And uh, hallelujah. But uh, <laughs> can't believe I just told that. That's God gives grace to the humble. Amen. How many men here had a cabbage patch doll? Dang it. I feel alone. Paul, you had one? Come on. Paul, stand up. Come on. Hey, me and Paul are going to kick all y'all butts. Come on. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. I'll take Paul over all y'all sissies. Real men had cabbage patch dolls. Where were we, Holy Spirit? Oh, yeah. One with the issue of blood. So she reaches through the crowd. She said, if I could only touch his garment. And I picture her having to reach to like a sea of people. And she couldn't get to him, but she could wiggle her hand through. Right? This is like Emma at the, the food line last night, the Briscoe wedding. She, there's, like, they're going like that. And she just was like trying to get to that ranch. Because she got the chicken and she didn't want to white barbecue. But she's like, 
<laughs> she got a hold of it. And this one lady's like, whoosh. It was like this matrix moment. And he's like, we're so sorry. She just needed the ranch. I'm like, that girl is going after it. Amen. Come on. If I can just touch the ranch. Amen. Yeah. Where are my ranch lovers at? I bet more, a lot more hands go for ranch than cabbage patch. Amen. She said, if I can just touch him, I know I can be healed. And she touched Jesus. And her issue dried up. And see, listen, if you have an issue, it's because you've not touched him. Because when you touch Jesus, he, takes, he delivers you of your issues. He delivers you of all your puckers. Amen. He, he removes your buttons. He takes it all in one touch. And then, he, uh, and then while he's ministering to this woman, and of course he's like, who touched me? I felt virtue. I felt, more, I felt, I felt power go out from me. They're like, how can you ask who touched you? Everybody's touching. He's like, no, nah, somebody touched me different. Somebody had intent. They came for something. They weren't just going with the flow, but they were making a demand. Let me tell you this. Do, do, you, do you have a demand on your life? Does your life have a demand on God? Do you recognize that you're not here by accident, but all of creation is groaning for what's on the inside of you to come out? And what you thought is working against you is working for you. That what you thought is, is, is opposing you is really your open door when you can approach it in the right way. And then, of course, the news comes and, hey, listen, don't trouble the master. Jairus' daughter is dead. And when Jesus gets there, some of these people that God told Ezekiel not to hang out with are there professional mourners. Like these guys made a joke. Like they, their, their hobby, their life work, the thing they look forward to is funerals. You guys know anybody like that? Like they're at every, hallelujah. I'm the anti-funeral guy. Like I'm like, let's put the fun back in funeral. Amen, amen. And I'm so thankful. Pastor Jonathan is our funeral guy. And he does them great, way better than me. Tim does better weddings. He does better funerals. But if you got a devil, look in my eyes. Amen. I'm thinking we got specialists on the team. Listen, if you got a devil, I'm the, pat, I'm the guy to talk to. If you want to get married, talk to him. Financial peace, talk to him. You, you die, have somebody call him. Amen. <laughs> if you have a donation, call him. <laughs> All right? You got you to have different anointings. Amen. Right? You got a book you want to write? Call him. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. All right, back to Ezekiel. Y'all going to get me in trouble. So he said, listen, there are going to be people who try to disconnect you from your ministry and try to get you to focus on what you lost. And at the moment of your, honestly, I've experienced the greatest transformation in my mind at the moments where I thought I was going to, I could lose everything. It was the place of the greatest risk. And I'm like, Lord, I'm so, like, I'm so out there in you. I have like all, like, I don't have a plan B. Like all of my eggs are in your basket. Like, I'm not just on the water. I couldn't even find the boat if I wanted to. And so without you, I don't have an option. I don't have an option. And I want to tell you, there's always been a lot of people who try to talk me into being tired. Try to talk me back into the boat. Oh, listen, you should do the... Listen, don't take advice from... Like, don't, don't take life advice from somebody that you don't want your life to look like theirs. Also, don't take criticism from somebody you wouldn't take advice from. You know, and you don't have to listen to what everybody says. There's this thing called the Heisman. We have a lot of them in Alabama. You know, there's a thing called red button on the iPhone. Hallelujah. I don't know you, don't want to talk to you. Amen. I get DM. I don't even go on like Facebook Messenger. and I, don't, I haven't looked at a DM in forever. I'm like, if they don't have my number, I don't need to talk to them. Otherwise, I'm going to get preoccupied answering everybody's questions and not really helping anybody. Are you with me? And part of renewing your mind is managing your mind share. Because oftentimes we're given so much of our mind to so many different places that we can find ourselves mentally tired. Has anybody ever felt mentally tired? And listen, there's enough things working against you that you don't have to give it away for free. I mean, like you don't have to just give some over here and give, like don't choose distraction. Choose your eye to be single so your whole body can be full of light. Are you with me? And so again, God is telling Ezekiel, Listen, there's going to be people who try to disconnect you from your ministry because of what they see that you've lost. But verse 18, he says, so I spoke to the people in the morning and in the evening my wife died. And the next morning I did as I was commanded. In other words, I did what I was called to do in the morning. At night, I experienced loss and I got back up and did what I was called to do. He did not allow what happened to him to happen in him. 
Zechariah chapter 3. Do y'all have time to get there? All right, let's go quick. Hallelujah. I pray I can preach this quicker than I got it. It was about a four-hour download, and so I'm not sure. It might be a whole month that we, we spend time here. Zechariah 3, verse 1. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Has anybody ever felt opposed by Satan? Resi- the word opposed means resisted, withstood. Paul said, God has set before me a great and effective door, but man, there, there are many adversaries at the door. And I want to tell you, the greater the opposition, the greater the opportunity. Yeah. Amen? So Satan is opposing him, resisting him, withstanding him. And listen, sometimes there can be opposition in the natural, but most opposition is in the mental. That's why, jo- how many of you remember the battlefield of the mind, Joyce Meyer? Never read it, but held it a few times. I hear it's amazing. I've got this grace. I can, if I hold it, I can tell you what's in it. Amen. I remember I used to, uh, when I was at Morningstar, I would, I would stand up and talk about Rick's books to sell the books. He's like, that's, that's amazing. He's like, you know, I've never seen anybody like do that. He's like, but you added a couple chapters to what I wrote. <laughs> I remember um, when I was, I was on a sabbatical and like I had ministered with France, French Pay and done some stuff, but I remember the Lord telling me, he's like, I want you to do this in Christ image training. And I loved it. It was, you know, the things that focus were like on um, unity and uh, Christ likeness and living unoffendably and all this kind of stuff. And so you'd like listen to teachings and you would read. And again, it was an act of humility. I mean, here I'm, I've ministered with the guy and the Lord's asking me to like go through his, you know, school and stuff like that. And, uh, but I knew it was the Lord. And so I was happy to do it. So I'm like, right in the reports, they're like, they're like, this is awesome. And like, there's some, some of this that we actually want to use, but none of this was actually in the teaching. I'm like, well, I read it, but then I held it and I just got more, you know I mean? It's like, and so part of us, that's how like our prophetic gift will work, right? When you touch it, you can begin to perceive from it. For some of you, when you hear something, you see stuff. How many of you like that? Others, when you see something, when I saw the picture of Jonathan and Jessica, a picture was worth a thousand words. I saw them, but then I saw Tina and I. Then I saw all of the different pastors and leaders that had come through this place under the hoopah. Then I saw, okay, that was the past. This is the present. Then I began to see the future. And I want to tell you, listen, don't turn off your gift when grace is trying to turn something on. And one of the things that renewing your mind does is it makes room for grace to make your gift greater. Renewing your mind allows grace to make your gift greater, to make the expression of your gift more dominant, to where, to where there is a gift of healing, miracles, discerning of spirits, prophecy. The Lord is always wanting to grow us. He's always wanting to stretch us. That's why just because it was good then does not mean it's God now. Are you with me? So again, Satan was resisting him. He was opposing him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this, speaking of Joshua, not a brand plucked from the fire? This is a burnt one. And how many know in the book of Nehemiah, it was the burnt stones that were the strongest stones and they were the ones they they hung the gates on. How many many of you have been burnt? You were made stronger. Come on. Listen, what, in the place that you were burned and not become, I call this, if you can get bit and become better, not bitter. That somebody did you wrong, but it didn't make you wrong. Amen. I told somebody the other day, I said, man, you're gonna have to learn to turn the other cheek. And I, and I started thinking about how many cheeks I've had. I'm like, I had, I've, I've not lost weight. I've just run out of cheeks. Amen. You know, it's like, I had to turn so many cheeks over the years. Amen. But I want to tell you, listen, every opportunity to get burnt and turn the cheek is actually an opportunity to become more like Christ. Are you with me? All right, verse three. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. How many know in Isaiah 64, he says that, uh, that, that we are like an unclean thing and all of our righteousness is like filthy rags. And so this is actually a prophetic picture of us prior to the renewing of our mind, me renewing the spirit of mind. Zachariah, Zachariah sees Joshua standing in the old man nature. And again, he, this is a vision he, of heavenly places. He saw him as a high priest. I mean, in Revelations 1, 5 says that we are kings, priests, and prophets. And I want to tell you, your righteousness apart from his blood is filthy rags. Are you with me? So he was in filthy rags, filthy garments. What is that? It was 
He was standing in his works. Joshua was not a perfect man. Probably had a cabbage patch. <laughs> he was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And to him, he said, see, I have removed your iniquity from you. See, iniquity is, iniquity, iniquity is a pattern of sin. Iniquity is not just what you do. It's a mindset that has produced um, action in your life. Iniquity can even be inherited, uh, you know, from, and, and again, when we got in, when we came into Christ, we came into a new generational line. And I, I know, I, you know, I authored that line, but at the same time, how many of you know that sometimes you can have patterns that are paternal? You can have a memory that's maternal, hallelujah, that we can inherit things, not just in our bloodline, but you can inherit from, that's why, it's, show, show me your five friends, I'll show you your future. Right, we become the sum total of the five people we spend the most time with. Right? Why? Because we take on how they think is how we think. Right? That's what that's what we, we take on. What they do is how we do. How many of you ever recognize you start spending a lot of time with somebody, you start acting like them? Right? That's why it's good to spend time with Jesus. Right? You spend you spend a lot of time with somebody. All of a sudden, how you say what you say begins to you pick up certain catchphrases and even intonations in your voice. You know, I've recognized even with me at times where I'd spend maybe more time with a certain minister or ministry, I would actually have to be very mindful of how I stewarded my gift because I could actually pick up their 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 methodology. I could pick up how they did what they did, and I'm not called to imitate their conduct. I'm called to imitate their faith. Hebrews 13, seven says, remember those who spoke the word of God over you, imitate their faith concerning the outcome of their conduct. However, charismatics love to imitate conduct and not faith. If I can, okay, if I can take my jacket and whoosh, like Benny, I can get that whole section to fall out. Not if you, not if you didn't say good morning, Holy Spirit. <laughs> if you didn't do what Benny did to get what Benny's got, you can towel whip everybody and ain't nobody going anywhere but after you. Okay. <laughs> we laugh because it's true, and most of us have believed that lie from, a time, from one time or another. So again, take away the filthy garments, and to him he said, I've removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. What does that speak of? See, Joseph had favor, and he got a coat. The prodigal son, when he came home, he got a what? A robe, bringing a robe. And so the robes was he was saying, I'm clothing you and me. I'm, I'm putting my inheritance on your life. I'm putting my favor. In other words, you're not here because of who you are. You're here because of who I am and you're with me. Have you ever been somewhere with somebody and they had more access than you, but you got somewhere you would have never got without them? God is with you. Jesus is with you. There's nowhere that you can't go that he desires to be. The key is to be renewed in the spirit of our mind to say, Jesus, where do you want to be? And who do you want me to be while we're there? Are you with me? Verse five. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. What was Ezekiel told to do? Hold on to your, hold on to your thinking cap. Don't lose your mind. Hold on to your head. He said, take off the old turban and put a new mind skin on him. So he got a robe, which is righteousness. It's identity. It showed whose he was. Because back then, back then robes were handed down. They, they identified you as a part of a family. But the turban was how he was gonna steward what he had been given. And listen, he who knew no sin became sin for you, that you could become the righteousness of God in Christ that you could become an ambassador of God, imploring the world to Jesus. But we can't be an ambassador of God without first thinking like God and representing God well in the earth. And that's where that new turban is so important. Why did God tell Ezekiel to hold on to your turban? Because those people who are gonna come up and try to talk him out of his ministry, what they're gonna try to get him to do is to lay down his call. To, 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 to lay down what God had told him to do. And I want to tell you, listen, I have seen into the fall and I have seen into next year. And you better get your new turbans and you better hold on to your hats. Because we are going to see God do some amazing things. 
in the midst of the devil trying to play every card he can, I want to tell you, God has many aces up his sleeve and he will always play the last hand. And that's why you cannot agree with the misery of those around you. You can't agree with the bad report. They gave Jesus in Mark 5 a bad report. Jairus' daughter is dead. What did he do? He said, shut up and get out of here. Shut up and get out of here. See, some of y'all have like a, like a, a nice little feminine Jesus. Just so polite, politically correct and passive. Hallelujah. Jesus turned tables. And there's a lot of people sitting at tables that Jesus is about to turn. He turns hearts, but he also turns tables. And I believe if you don't allow your heart to be turned, your table might get turned. See, there's always opportunity for repentance, but ultimately righteousness has to stand. Justice will be served. But you can't lose your turban. You can't lose your head in the process. You got to keep your heart right and you got to keep your head righteous. Are you with me? So what did Jesus do when all these people were trying to get him to conform to the world of death around him, to conform to that report? He said, y'all don't have to go home, but you got to get out of here. And what did he do? He took Peter, James, and John with Jesus, and they went in. Why? Because four of a kind beats a full house. And who you walk with, who you talk with, who you work with, And who you partner with in this season will determine where you go and what you do with the rest of your life. This is a month of fullness, but we've been given it in seed form. We're called to steward for increase, not to squander it on the temporary, but to set our minds on the other side. Are you with me? Very quickly. We'll talk more about that in the coming weeks. Let them put a clean turban on his head. Got to think right. So they put clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him and the angel of the Lord stood by. Verse six, then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua saying, so he counseled him. Now, one of the things you gotta think about here again, what did they do? They put these robes on him. They were robes of righteousness. That was what, the, that was what it was speaking of. John G. Lake, I love this. In his book, Spiritual Hunger, he defines righteousness, the righteousness of God being the rightness of God in your spirit, the rightness of, of God in your spirit, soul, which is your mind, it's your will, it's your emotions, the rightness of God in your body, the rightness of God in your affairs, in your home, in your business, everywhere. So God's righteousness is not just a theory. It's not just theology. It cannot just be belief. It also has to be behavior. It has to be in thought, in word, and in action, because that threefold cord will not be broken. And so God is looking for a consistent people who, who are not just consistent in the good times, but double down in the tough times. And the, listen, I'm telling you, July and August, we're gonna be hammering the renewed mind because listen, you're gonna overcome in September. There's gonna be a lot of stuff that tries to overwhelm you that you will overcome. Are you, the reason why, one of the reasons why I've got this prophetic, I, I felt so strongly for us that we originally were gonna do this conference in October and we've got some practical things like Brian Simmons coming in November. So I, I said, I, I can't get away from this September 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Like there's like, we, we've got, we've got, we have to be a, a voice of hope in that window. We have to be a people who can see into the unseen realm and speak from what we see and what we hear in the spirit so it can begin to go to work in the natural. Are you with me? Because I want to tell you, listen, you're called to overcome. We will prevail. We overcome by what? The blood of the lamb, loving our lives not unto death, right? And the word of our testimony, which all three play a part in the renewing of your mind. We'll talk more about it uh, in the coming weeks. I just saw, the, just saw that clock. Hallelujah. That clock just keeps going. Amen. Somebody unplug it. All right. The angel of the Lord admonished Joshua saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways. So you can't walk in God's ways without thinking God's thoughts. Isaiah 55 shows us the thoughts and the ways of God. Isaiah 55, eight, he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways are higher than your ways. The religious spirit puts a period there. But that's not the end of the verse or even the end of the chapter. He said, as far as the heavens are from the earth, so are my thoughts from your thoughts and my ways from your ways. So what he's saying is, on the old covenant, my thoughts and ways are here, your thoughts and ways are here. But how did Jesus tell us to pray? your kingdom come, your will, your will, which is your thoughts, your ways, your mind, what you desire, how you think, how you speak, be done in me as it is in 
heaven, right? And then it goes on to say, as the water, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth to give what? Bread to the eater, that's your now. Seed to the sower, that's your next. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It'll accomplish what I sent it to do and it will prosper in that place. You will go out with joy. You'll be led forth in peace. The trees of the field will clap their hands before you. Why? Because you are the missing ingredient of his thoughts and his ways coming as a word in due season to accomplish what God sent it to do and to prosper in this place. You are a word from heaven. I love what Pastor Tim shared in the, trans, the transition of being heavenly minded. Heavenly minded, heavenly minded. We are heavenly minded, but we also are planted with a purpose. You see, we're not, we're not fr- like, we, we may be, we may be uh, born in America, but we're citizens of heaven. I love America, but I love heaven even more. Some people try to t- put one nationality before another. I'm a heavenly American. You're a heavenly, you're a kingdom American. Hallelujah. See, because we serve a king and he has a kingdom that is ours to come. Why is it the rain and the snow coming down from heaven? Because both are in the treasuries. Job 38, he, there's a treasury of snow and hail. How many of you know there's snow in heaven? Hallelujah. Come on, some of y'all, you know, people, I know Richard Mixon all of a sudden just decided he's gonna get pants, amen. Just kidding, he wears shorts in the winter, amen. Deuteronomy 28 says that he would open to us his good treasure of the heavens and cause it to rain on our land in its season. See, rain and snow speak of the thoughts and the ways of God. And we are called to walk in his ways. He says, if you will walk in my ways, which are connected to the turban, how you think, if you can, if you can begin to think right, you can begin to walk right, you can begin to live right. And you will keep my command, you will do what I say, like Pastor Jonathan saying, then you will also judge my house and likewise have charge over my courts. What happens in courts? Decisions are made, favorable verdicts are released. Justice is served, but also there is, there, there's, 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 uh, there, there's, there's a, a, a tipping of the scales that makes wrong things right. In other words, if something is done to you that is wrong and it goes into the courts, then all of a sudden it comes to a higher authority that says, okay, based on precedent, hallelujah, this is the decision that heaven is releasing in your situation to bring a divine destiny where you've had disappointment and discouragement. And I wanna tell you, God is looking for a people who can be trusted with his authority to have charge over his courts and to live from the holiest out. To live from the inner court, the inner chamber of who he is and make it known to those around us. He said, I, you'll have charge of my courts and I will give you places to walk among those who stand here. Hey, you know, this was an encounter in heaven. Who's he, who, who, is, who is he talking with? Those who stand here, who's standing with him in heaven? Of course, it's the Godhead, but it's also the cloud of witnesses. It's also the four living creatures. It's also the 144,000, it's the 24 elders. He said, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna allow you to come in and go out. If you, can begin to, if you can begin to think like me, there won't be a veil. And see, when we are renewed in the spirit of our mind, we don't live on one side of the veil or the other. We live in between. Because how many of you know Jesus tore the veil? And we have access to take from heaven and to release to the earth. We are the horizon. We are the dawning of the new day. We are the place where the skies meet the water. We are, we are God's in between. Come on, you are the multiplication sign in the equation that this times you equals that when you're planted in the right place to prosper. When you're thinking right thoughts and allowing his life to be your life. He says, not only will you have access, but here, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. Pastor Tim talked about, we are for signs and wonders. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. That's all caps. I'm bringing forth Jesus, 
Come on, I'm bringing forth Jesus, not just for you, but in you and through you. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon the stone are seven eyes. Well, how many of you know in Revelations chapter five, verse six, it says the seven eyes are the seven spirits of God sent into all the earth. Second Chronicles 16, nine says that those same eyes are searching to and fro throughout the earth, looking for hearts that are completely his, hearts that are loyal, hearts that think like him, believe like him, love like him, live like him, hearts that are undivided in their devotion so he can attach himself to them. God is wanting to put you on and attach himself to you. He's wanting to be in you, on you, for you, and through you for others. And it's all connected to how you think and what you think. But it gets better. Come on, say it gets better. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Somebody just had the ESPN theme song, and I felt the Lord. Amen. <laughs> da 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 da. Probably not. I just manned it up a little bit. The uh, it started. Yes, it started. I'll never live that down. It's that's all right. It started with Joshua's iniquity. But after he walks through this process of getting rid of his righteousness and putting on the Lord's, putting off the old way of thinking, the thinking cap, and putting on the new turban, being given charge to walk in the courts, God said, what I did for you, I'm going to do for Alabama. I'm going to remove the iniquity of America in one day. You see, because God plants people in places. And he says, if my people planted in places who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and repent from the wicked ways. They'll repent from their filthy rags and their old turban. They'll turn to me. They'll humble themselves. I'll forgive them. I'll heal their land. And I'm going to tell you, the iniquity of our nation is connected to your transformation. The removal of the iniquity that has been a commitment of a setting sin and has pulled us back time and time again is connected to a people who get free, stay free, walk free, and lead others in freedom. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. I will remove the iniquity of that land. And one day, again, he starts out by saying, I have removed your iniquity. But the process was to remove the iniquity of an entire nation. And I want to tell you, your transformation is connected to freedom, not just for people, but for places. And all of creation is groaning for you to say yes to what God is offering you in this season that we would fully taste and clearly see first who we're called to be. See, because when you see him rightly, you'll see yourself rightly. So first we have to see, God, who are you in this season? Who are you presenting yourself as in this season? Throughout history, there was certain truths of, of God that have been represented in various seasons that were bringing healings of past wounds. Oftentimes you'd see revivals connected to this. Like Toronto, I mean, like, of course, Brownsville, he was Jesus as savior, as redeemer, righteousness. Of course, Toronto was really the father's love, the father heart of God, seeing so many, not just people, but so many pastors, thousands and thousands of pastors who had been bit by sheep getting healed by God. It was amazing, right? And, and finding the joy in the journey again, finding their joy in their salvation. See, because you can't give joy when you don't have joy. You know, looking at some of the great healing revivals, Jesus continuing to represent the Father to an orphan planet. And I want to tell you, God is bringing it all together as one last outpouring of the wine that's going to have all of the best of the previous outpouring. It's going to have all of the best of what's been, but it's a beautiful bouquet of what God desires to do. And each and every one of us, the pressing you've been through is to get the fullness of who he is on the inside out. And renewing your mind gets God out in the best way possible. And so I bless your mind today. I bless your mind to come into alignment with your assignment. 
I speak right now to your spirit to take the forefoot right now, to take the front seat right now in your life. The areas where your soul has worked against your spirit and even your body has tried to war with your soul. I speak to your soul and to your body to get in line. Hallelujah. I speak to your spirit, man, to rise up strong in the Lord with the joy of the Lord, to be strong in spirit. And I speak to your soul right now in the name of Jesus to be made whole. I speak right now that where there's been fractions, where there's been, there's been fissures, there's been cracks, there's been, been, been open doors where the enemy has come knocking and has had hidden places to, for those doors right now to be closed. Man, I, man. I just feel that the Holy Spirit wants to minister each one in a very unique way right now. There's, um, I, as soon as I said that, I saw heads being put on the altar. I saw heads being put on the altar. And one of the things I recognized years ago is Jezebel is always after the head. He's always, because she, she tried to take Elijah's head. She, tried, she took John the Baptist's head because he began to question God. The way to, the, way, the way to keep the enemy from getting your head is to give your head to God because the devil can't take what belongs to God. And so if you're here this morning, you say, God, I don't even know what this looks like, but I, I want to put my mind on the altar. I want to renew my mind. I want you just to get up here. There's something, and Pastor John, whatever's in your heart, just come. But I, there's, I believe, I believe, listen, the spirit, I'm going to just start prophesying, because right now, God's going to begin to start doing something that honestly, even on this, even on this cellular, it's going to be connected even to, to, to memories, to bad memories, to hurtful memories, to expectation of wrong, uh, uh, to, to almost kind of like worst case scenarios, vain imagination. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I just speak right now a loosing of those old mind skins right now. I speak to the old thinking caps to be gone. I bless your soul to come into wholeness in this season. I pray that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So again, I speak to your spirit man to rise up. Hallelujah. I speak to the alignment necessary for your assignment. And God, ooh, 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 ooh. And the same way that anointing came in last week with the ability to get wealth and the angels started blowing and the winds began to fall. I just started to, just started to see even now, there's been areas where you've been out of alignment and things have been harder than they had to be because of what was going on in your head. And it was like, it was like when you have a wheel out of alignment and listen, wheel, Wheels don't work themselves out. There has to be an outside assistance. And see, there was those who had stood there with Zechariah. They had stood with Joshua. And he said, hey, those of you who are here, those angels on assignment, I want you to step in and bring alignment. And God, right now, I just thank you for the angels who are here today to minister to us, Lord. Right now, Lord, to come and to bring the new turbans right now. God, we do. We want to put on the new turbans. We want to put off the old and put on the new. Lord, that we be renewed in the spirit of our mind right now Lord we repent and in fact right now if there's anything the Lord is bringing up in your heart I encourage you just to give give repentance a voice this morning come on just begin to give him that sincerity of heart that humility of heart that grace could come upon you today Lord we repent for ways that seemed right it seemed right it seemed right based on what we saw in the moment it seemed right based on what was happening in the world around us even felt righteous. But in hindsight, we recognize that it was not fullness. It was not what you had for us. And we want the fullness. We want what you have, Lord. We want a robe, hallelujah. That's your song, Jonathan, we gotta do it. We, we got the robe, hallelujah, the robe. Come on, he's gonna put a robe on you. Come on, he's gonna put a robe on you. He's gonna put a turban. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna give you, I know turban sounds weird. It sounds all Middle Eastern. He's gonna give you a new thinking cap, hallelujah. Come on, he's gonna give you a new mind skin, hallelujah. Come on, he's got a ring with your name on it. He's got a signet ring. Come on, he's ready to give sons and daughters the sign right now of the family, hallelujah. He's marking us, he's marking us, he's marking us us. Hallelujah. Come on. He's writing his name on your forehead. Writing his name on your forehead. Writing your na his name on your forehead. Hallelujah. Come on. Right now, just in the same way that you would give your heart to Jesus, begin to surrender your mind. Come on. That living sacrifice as your reasonable act of worship today. Come on, 
on, come on, come on, come on. There's room. Come on, press in, press in, press in. Come on, if you're in the aisle, I want you to just press in. Come on, listen, there's something that happens when we just press in. Hallelujah. Come on, think about that woman of the issue of blood. She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to stand in the back and just think I'm going to get the, the leftovers. I'm going to, if I could just touch him. Come on, I invite you to touch him today. Touch him this morning. Come on, reach out and touch him.
it. Come on, prophesy over us. Come on, that's it. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, even though I just, even the drums, there's something breaking up right now. It's like the hard places right now breaking up. The old thought patterns breaking up. The old walls coming down, breaking down, breaking down. Come on, new, new lines of life, new thought patterns right now. New, new, new. Exodus 20, Moses ascended the mountain and stepped into the cloud. And to everyone else, they saw it as darkness. He saw it as a door. And when Pastor Jonathan was singing about all things new, I, I, my, my, my mind and my heart went back to what we were sharing about with, with pictures and cameras and how negatives are brought into the dark room to be developed. And could it be the things that you didn't like about you or the things that God is wanting to develop in this season in the glory? Not just out in the public, not just out to where all can see, but I wanna tell you, listen, there's something about when people people look at what God is doing in your life, to, to them, they may have questions, to them, they may go, that, that looks like the last place you wanna go to be able to see something. But I wanna tell you, there's th things in, in, the, in the darkness of the cloud that God is wanting to develop. If we will trust Him and not deny those things that have felt negative, even the things that have felt lost, even the things, because it's not just, a, faith is not denial. It's speaking to things that do not exist yet as though they do. And I wanna tell you, I believe that one of the ways that God is wanting to renew the mind is to even begin to redeem the negatives. And so Father, right now in the name of Jesus, for each and every one of us, God, I ask that you'd bring us into the dark rooms of development, the secret place, Lord, the prayer closets, Lord, the places where we can come and safely do the hard heart work to offer ourselves to you, completely open, transparent, hiding nothing. And again, I think there's 
a whole lot. I, I personally don't know a whole lot about even the development of film and stuff like that. It's just like, I know enough to not let me take a picture. <laughs> but there's something where the Lord is wanting. He's, he's saying, will you trust me with those negatives? And I feel like that some of, I feel like that's some of even the mind that he's wanting us to give. It's some of the, 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 the fear of disappointment. He's wanting to replace thoughts of loss with thoughts of love. Thoughts of lack with thoughts of abundance. Thoughts of sickness with thoughts of divine health. Thoughts of fear with thoughts of God-breathed faith. And I feel that what's happening is, is God is in this month, we talked about creation last week and created for glory, that God is forming what he's been created so he can fill it. He's shaping us in his mind and in his image so that we could be the full expression of the thoughts he thinks towards us, but also to be the sand of the seashore for the world around us. How many of you recognize that there's been some things that you've walked through where there has been legitimate disappointment that has kept you from getting your hopes up? Listen, I just wanna invite you right now, that's you just whatever surrender looks like. If it's lifting both hands to him, if it's laying it down, but I wanna tell you, listen, you can trust him with the negatives. You can, you, you can send the film of your faith to him. And I wanna tell you, you're gonna be amazed at what comes back to you. You're gonna be the amazed at the images that were captured, even in the past ses- season, that gave you present joy and a future filled with God's favor. God, right now, I bless the dark rooms. I bless the dark rooms. I bless the dark rooms. I bless the places of development development and discovery. God, I bless right now those doors of destiny right now that are opening. Come on, you can trust him in the dark seasons. You can trust him even in what feels like a dark place. You can f- trust him, trust him. Come on right now, just begin to enter that trust. Lord, I, get, I, get, I give you this, I give you this, not knowing what it's gonna look like. I don't need to know the outcome before I say yes. I don't need to know what it's gonna look like. I know what you look like. I trust you. Yeah.
bless your faith with an impartation of patience. One thing I've seen in my life is oftentimes I don't need patience for long, but there are moments that I need it. And a lot of times, you know, it's like I, I shy away from patience because I'm like that whole long suffering, hallelujah. But I want to tell you, faith and patience inherits. And I feel, I, I just, I feel like there's a, like a, a like a, it's, 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 a, it's a right tension that God has wanted to bring us under that's going to bring transformation. There's a principle when it comes to like bodybuilding and it's time under tension equals transformation. You don't have to spend a lot of time because if you spend too much time, you're overtraining, you don't get enough recovery, but it's, it's the appropriate tension with the appropriate time for the desired transformation. And so I bless your faith with patience. I bless your time and I also bless the tension. I bless the light that is in you to grow brighter in this season and that even the pressing on you will release an oil and a wine from you. Wow. Mounts of transformation transfiguration beholding becoming beholding and becoming I was going to ask Pastor Tim to pray into fully developed but I think he's uh, he's in a birthing process right now One of the things I recognize in my life is oftentimes your breakthroughs and how you can partner with the breakthroughs of others. Just stretch your hands. I believe that there's something even with Pastor Tim right now as a prophetic sign. Pastor Joshua and Pastor Jim, you guys can just lay hands on him too. Caleb, Samuel. Father, right now, God, we just thank you, Lord, for the groanings, the groanings, the groanings, the groanings, the groaning, groaning, groaning. Come on, begin to press in. Come on, everybody. Just there's something about the cluster. Come on, there's new one in the cluster. Hallelujah. Come on, we don't six foot nothing around here. Hallelujah. Come on, get up close. Hallelujah. Get where you can touch somebody. The anointing is transferable. It's tan tangible. Father, right now, God, I just, Lord, I thank you for a seismic birthing, God. Lord, a birthing, Lord, not just from us, but through us, God, I thank you for splitting the earth open with purpose in this season, God. I thank you that the heavens are open, but the earth is crying out right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I thank you for the creation, the creation that's groaning right now. Come on, I just call for the manifestation, the birthing of the sons, the birthing of the daughters. Yeah! All things new! bless the pushing. I bless the pushing. I bless the pressing. Come on, that woman, the issue, she pressed through. She pressed through. She pressed through. I bless the pressing through right now in the places that you have felt crowded, in the places you have felt confined, in the places you have felt, you have felt held back to what you can only see, 
for the now. I bless you in the pressing right now. I bless you right now just to press, 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 to press past what you thought was possible. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're gonna meet us in that place with the renewing of the mind. Lord, that you're gonna deliver us from the bondages that have held us back, God. Lord, I thank you that the gospel is the antidote for everything that has warred against us. I thank you that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is, 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 is working within us right now, releasing resurrection power. God, I thank you that the same spirit that anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit of power, going about doing good, healing all who are oppressed, anointing him to preach the gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. Lord, removing the yoke, destroying the burden, Lord, healing the brokenhearted, the disheartened, proclaiming liberty to the captives, God. Lord, delivering from bondage, recovery of vision, recovery of sight to those who have been blind, setting at liberty those who have been pressed and oppressed, and declaring this as the acceptable year of God's favor, homecoming, hallelujah. God, I thank you for a breakout year. I thank you for a bumper crop year. God, I thank you, Lord, for exceeding, Lord, what we could ask or think possible according to the power of God at work in each and every one of us. And we just say yes and amen, 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 all of the promises, all of the promises, yes and amen. All things, all things. I bless each one of you to walk in the fullness of his portion of new for your now. I bless you in your new. I bless the work that he's doing in your heart. I bless the renewing in your mind. I bless the renovation that we, we would easily throw out the things that were permissible but not profitable. We would recognize, hey, that served me for a time, but that's just kind of cluttering up my opportunity. That's, that's, that's actually not what I'm called to. Some of you are called to like, either there's even like a downsizing in the things that you thought were necessary for this season. And some of you, it's almost like the Lord is narrowing your focus gate. I bless your gate to be even more narrow in this season. I bless your eye to be even more single in this season. I bless you to be even more focused in this season. And I bless you with the fullness that God has for you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we give the Lord a huge shout of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not going to miss next Sunday. Renew your money mind. Hallelujah. I feel money miracles in the air too. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. <laughs>